out so the tour and how it fits into professionalism these days, but you can see the players, you can, you can hear the songs, the English songs, the Welsh songs, the Scots songs and the Irish songs. So a great day, great day all around, a great performance and well deserved to all the team as well. Very good. Obviously, uh, the first half was quite tense, but as you, as you alluded to there, we had a, a couple of tries. Let's say Sexton's try was probably was really the start of it all, you know, and half penny and Ferrison but it was key to it, both tries actually. Shane, what are your thoughts there just as we reflect on the, the second half? So, things opened up there the last 20 25 minutes, and we finally had to see this line's back line that was so much talked about during the week. And I suppose Lee Halfpenny, the uh, outstanding player of the tournament, once again just showed us what he's capable of. Before today, Evan probably just thought he was just a stray eye kicker and just kicked everything, but he's been outstanding all tour. His positional work on the ball today, he's brilliant. He set up the two tries. He just hasn't put a foot wrong in three games, and it's an incredible asset for anything. Just then, that, uh, I suppose Robert's try was probably the icing on the cake, but at that stage, the line three did look like they were on top, didn't they? Yeah. The introduction to Conor Murray I thought was very important as well. He speeded up the ball and we saw just the simple little hands for Jamie Roberts and picked a great line just to score in the post. You know, it's supposed to justify every one of Gatlin's selections. We all thought he got it wrong, but he, he's really laughing last. I suppose Victor maybe just moving on to that because it is a series win. I suppose Brian Driscoll. He must have mixed emotions there, or is it just, I suppose you'd know the man, is it a case that he'll be, or I suppose, or will, or will he call to be with him? So it's really hard to sit in the stand and watch that. You know, at the end of the day, the facts are he's part of a winnings line series. Uh, by, by his own admission, he, he, we all know how vicious and successful he is. You know, if you look at Johnny Sexton without diverting your question, but about 20 minutes into that second half, Johnny Sexton was turning G off the back line. He knew they were overperforming. You know, they weren't getting the ball out to the, the likes of North, the, the likes of Johnny um, Gold. I think that would be a crucial time. And Johnny Sexton learned over the years with time in Ireland, with time in Leinster, to demand so much for the guy beside you because Brian O'Driscoll has been doing this for 12 years in Leinster. You're demanding so much for the people beside you. The unfortunate thing is that he didn't have a chance today to demand so much for his team. What, you know, ironically, and he was speaking to Jerry there, you know, the likes of Paul O'Connell, you know, 34 years of age, Brian just 34 years of age, you know, it's going to be really hard for him. Um, there's a lot, there's one more year he's got to play with Ensor Ireland. There's a book coming out. It probably not going to plan in terms of what he would have wanted, but sport never does. He can never plan a retirement. You know, but this team, you know, the front row today were outstanding. The second row were outstanding. They boxed never, they played well, they, they, they had their, their down moments, but overall they read the game well and they obliterated the Aussies in the end. And, you know, when things like that happen, you have to stand up and, and, and have that performance, and Brian will be the first to do this. Fair play, fair play. I suppose you just mentioned there the, uh, the go forward ball, like there was, it did look like there was a good bit of a difference in it, let's say, that I suppose when, when Conor Murray came on, there was quick balls that would hit Sexton. Um, I suppose then, the centre combination, did it come in at that stage, or was it, you know, it did look like they, they were standing deeper in the second half, you know? Yeah, both Roberts and Davis showed great touches of class, and we saw Roberts pick his line for the first time all day and score straight under the sticks. We saw John and Davis was, uh, played a key role for the first try, for North's first try, and just they took the time, they got the quick ball, Sexton was on the front foot, it made everything go, Bull and North got involved, and just it created doubt, even for Roberts try, they're saying that George North was out the pocket, and just the fear of George North getting the ball, but all the Aussies under pressure, and then just kind of. Conor Murray made the right decision for Roberts. Very good. I suppose Victor just mentioned Sexton and his bossing of the game. I was reading during the week that Adam Jones said he was the angriest player he ever played with. But I suppose maybe just to kind of allude to that, let's say, we, we were contrasting in the two tens, but when you have a ten like Sexton who is demanding the ball maybe, and he, he's, as Victor alluded to there with 20 minutes ago, he was telling the guys we've got to pick it up. Can you just explain maybe what the impact of that is? It's, it's just incredible, like, for a game like that where maybe the backs hadn't touched the ball like for 10, 15 minutes in that second half, they'd been on the back foot, they hadn't, Australia had been all over them and you could see there, they got a turnover, Johnny would be the first man in, he'd be raising everyone, he'd be shouting, he'd be screaming, he'd be telling everyone what to do, this is what we're going to do, he'd be planning phases ahead, just he put them in the right direction and it's something that you don't notice until you're actually out on the pitch that one, how good a quality 10 is like that, maybe 
Australia locked it, maybe Craig Cooper would have might have been there better for them, but they locked it down, they seem to lock it down all the three test series and in the end it's in the shooting in the foot. Just maybe just going to that back row then, Victor, like Sean O'Brien you've been a big thing for Ireland over the last few years, but it's not been the best Yeah, I think in the first half, you know, the, 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 the Australians didn't really play, they kind of stood off the first half. I mean, you could go back and have a conspiracy theory saying that the right board drifts might be around, they might have stood off thinking that there's not much to attract in, in the midfield. Um, so the Lions had, had the lion's the line share of, of possession in the first half, they dominated the scrums, they avoided lineups, and they flashed pretty clever. But, you know, there was that moment when the, when the Australians were coming back, and they dealt with it. You know, rugby in those situations, you just need to get the ball. And once you get the ball and use the ball in your control, the other side of the score. So in these high pressure situations that it was in the second half, the Lions were able to dominate, hold on to possession, start the Australians, snuff out their attack, and they took their opportunities. And like to be fair, coming down to or watching the Australian series here, you would have known going down that they had the players that had the team and just they weren't using them as effectively as they probably did in the second half race test. Yeah, we just uh, as we see the, the presentation being made, that's great to see. I suppose maybe for the Aussies, what's next? Will Deans keep his job, or is he likely to? Well, I think Deans is completely uh, played by Warren Gatlin today, and uh, you know he 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 bases teams on, 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 a, on a heavy hitting Australian side last few games with the likes of Beal and you know the attack they have. Uh, he was totally outplayed from the the, the tactics department. Uh, will he keep his place? I don't know. It's a mid their season down there, but it's probably too late to change the season. But from an Australian point of view, as, as a comeback, they said 40 points to Sydney on their home turf. It's great for us, but not great for them. Uh, I suppose then, maybe just looking into the season that's coming up, season, it's, uh, I think that's a, a lovely sight to see Andres can lift them there. It's a ball, right? It's a lovely sight to see. I suppose maybe just as, as we, we see the two Irish guys, actually, or three Irish guys picking up the, uh, the cup. Um, the season that's coming, let's say, Six Nations, all internationals, we obviously we've got, uh, we have got New Zealand coming up. What's your thoughts, or just, uh, let's say, Wales, obviously 10 men have, have come and, and uh, have won a line series. Uh, what's your thoughts maybe for, for the season coming? I think it's been a very important season for Joe Smith. Uh, things went very wrong uh, for Ireland point of view the last six months. And Joe Smith is going to bring a blend of rolling rugby, which is what Ireland's right on these days. Um, and I think, uh, you know, there's a lot out there. You're, you're still at Ryan just for a year of his experience, and yet you the blend of you coming through. And, you know, when you look at the Lions that Ireland had over there, uh, the Lions guys, the Zee, the Old Car, and the Chase, you get used to them. You know, this is very much part of another self, which, you know, will be done. And yes, there was a problem with you people thinking that the Welsh team today and so on, the Welsh played their part. But let's not forget that Ireland beat Wales in the beginning of the season. So, from an Irish point of view, that's a racial point of view, I think it's going to be very exciting. Very good. Shane, your thoughts, let's say, obviously it's a big season for yourself. Yeah, it's massive for all the players out there. They're going to come back and come back in September and October and they're going to be on such a high. Like they're, going to, they're going to take their few weeks off and they're going to be raring to go again, get back on the rugby field and start again for four years' time, maybe go down to New Zealand. But obviously, 
from an Irish point of view, we saw Conor Murray, he grew every game he played over that tour and he came about, he's still a very young guy, there's from half to be Boston players around, like Paul O'Connor, like Adam and Jones, in, in an environment that he wouldn't know much about. And we saw Johnny Sexton going off to France, he'd, he'd even learn more next year, hopefully, and, and just be immense for Ireland as years go on. And just for Tommy Ball to come back, and it was just incredible, and he, he's going to be raring to go, hopefully he gets an injury-free season and show everyone what he's capable of again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see when you have Roman O'Gara and Johnny Sexton at the one club next year, the two angriest men. But, uh, I suppose, look guys, uh, I suppose we'll try and wrap it up there. I really, really appreciate the two of you coming. Victor, I know you did a lot of work to get down from, from Dublin this morning, and you were working late last night. Shane, for coming off from Galway, you were training this morning. So I really appreciate a, a round of applause for the two guys. Thank you very much. We hope to see the two of you around the, around the club uh, a lot more. Um, just to, finally, just to finish up, uh, I have this ticket that I, I called out at the start. It was uh, an orange ticket. It was 731 to 73.